Hello. Welcome to Moments with the Master. Uh, it is... It doesn't matter what day it is. I'm here to talk about the readings for Holy Trinity Sunday. Uh, they are Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 32 through 40. Um, the psalm is 33, the uh, verses 2 through 9, and the epistle is Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, and then the gospel is Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. I'm going to do the same reading as Josh. All those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children and heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided that we suffer with him in order that we also may be glorified with him. In the reading of that, I have realized that I may have, huh, uh, I, uh, I read the Holy Trinity epistle last week. Hmm, funny. Um, well, it's good enough to talk about for two weeks, right? Sorry, but, um, okay. So, uh, reading this one again, like, uh, um, I don't want to go over what I did, uh, last time, by the way, this, this, uh, as I was reading it this time, I was reminded of a <sighs> Christian contemporary worship song from the eighties, possibly seventies, probably seventies. Um, <laughs> it, it went, uh, we are heirs with the father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the Spirit. We are family. We are one. And that's the whole song. Uh, they might have done it as a round. Oh, God, I haven't thought about that in so long. Um, if children and heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Um, so... Josh wanted me to talk about, um, he asked me if I would discuss the three types of martyrdom, red, green, and white. Green, by the way, for all of you linguists out there, can also be translated as blue. So it could be red, white, and blue. We'll talk about that in a moment. Anyway, so this, the, 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 the three types of martyrdom is not shockingly, not some random thing that people applied to Celtic Christianity and uh, some cutesy thing. It actually comes from the, I'm going to say this wrong, Cambrai, Cambrai homily, which is from the seventh century. So this is, um, 1400 years old, uh, probably more like 1300 years old, but a little bit older than that. Um, right around the same time as, as Be Thou My Vision was written, uh, this, this homily is important on several levels. Not only does it give us a, a taste of um, actual Celtic Christianity, like what the actual Celtic Christians were like. It wasn't just Amazing Grace played on the harp instead of, uh, instead of the organ. Um, so it was written in uh, the vernacular, and it is actually for all of the crap that Christianity gets about destroying literature and, and, and culture, it was, it was Christians who, for example, Christians who preserved all of the Nordic, um, um, mythologies, all of the Celtic mythologies for that matter. Um, and it was, uh, uh this, this most ancient example that we have of old Irish vernacular, the very first one that we have is this sermon, the Cambrai, Cambrai, Cambrai homily. Um, it's there's a lot of Latin interspersed, like the the um, the scriptures are direct, directly taken out of the Vulgate, I assume, and then there's a lot of patristic writings, I assume Augustine and others, uh, Jerome, that uh, Gregory that are that are. Um, and taken out of the Latin, like there's direct Latin quotations, but then the explication of those is in Old Irish, um, which I, if you, I have no 
not even the faintest clue how to pronounce how to read old Irish writing. Like it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, okay. So, uh, there's two parts in here that directly, like, the whole sermon really is about suffering, godly suffering. Um, so there's one part where, where they're talking about the verse where Jesus says to take up your cross and follow him. Um, and so they say that you can carry the cross of Christ in two ways. The first way is to mortify, to humiliate, to to humble your body with fasting. There's a lot. There is a lot of fasting and and mortification that happens in in Celtic Christianity. Again, you would be better served to recite all of Psalm 119 every day, uh, up to your neck in freezing water. That would make you more of a of a truly faithful Celtic Christian than, than, uh, um, you know, a, a penny whistle version of, uh, addition to, to some hymn. Uh, anyway, so first way to carry the cross of Christ in your, uh, carry the cross of Christ is to mortify your body with fasting. The second way is to take on the needs of your neighbor as your own. It's kind of like the Irish version of love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so they, uh, and then they end it by saying the compassion of, uh, compassion equals the cross of Christ in your heart. Compassion for your neighbor is the same. It, that is how you carry the cross of Christ in your heart. And if you do not, if I'm to believe the oldish vernacular Irish sermon that we have, if you do not carry, if you do not have compassion for your neighbor, if you do not take their needs as your own, then you do not have the cross of Christ in your heart. I believe that that is definitely borne up by Scripture. Actually, more than I believe that is borne by Scripture, I believe that that flows out of an honest reading of Scripture. So then they talk about um, Christ as a model for meaningful suffering. Not just as a meaningful suffering, but as a model for how we should be in relationship with one another. Um, and there's, I'm going to mess up the quote here because I was just kind of taking notes on this, but uh, the quote goes something like, for Jesus, everyone's sickness was his sickness. Everyone's offense, whenever somebody offended another person, it was his offense. Everyone's infirmity was his infirmity. And we should be the same way. If we are to be like Christ, if we're to have meaningful suffering, and to have true relationships with each other, then we have to pick up each other's burdens. That is that is the key of what Jesus does for us. He he takes on our burden. He takes on our sickness. He takes on our infirmity. He doesn't just wave them. Actually, that's that is so important. God could have just cured all of the infirmities, healed all of our ills, and all of those things. And that's one of the reasons why people say that they can't believe in God, because how can you believe in a God who could make everything better and does not? Either it's the problem of evil. Either God is too weak to fix everything. Either God is too uh, cruel or evil or unconcerned to fix everything. Or either uh, God, what's the third one? Um, I can't remember what the third one was, but regardless. Because there is evil in the world, there must not be a God. But that's one of the things that Scripture shows us, that Jesus, if we are to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he is God, then what God does is not just fix everything. Not that Jesus didn't feed people, not that he didn't heal diseases, he did all of that. But more than that, Jesus took on our suffering and made it his own. So if we are to be like Jesus for other people, it's not just fixing everything. It's taking on their burdens and making them ours. We couldn't fix everything and if, even if we wanted to. So Jesus lived a life where he, he lived in relationship with other people with our limitations. We can't just magic away uh, everybody's, everybody's suffering but we can take on their burdens. 
And, and in as much as we are not willing to do that, we're not living in relationship with each other as Christ lives in relationship with us. Um, so then the last part that, uh, that Josh was talking about is about the three types of martyrdom. This was based on, well, okay, so early on it was easy to be martyred, not necessarily in Ireland, but in, in Rome, certainly. You know, you you had to kind of work hard not to be martyred at, at certain times uh, during the during the empire before um, Constantine. But um, in Ireland, it was always kind of difficult. And after um, the fourth century, it was incredibly hard to become uh, to be a martyr in uh, the Roman Empire. So Jerome. St. Jerome started talking about the uh, another type of martyrdom, one uh, of asceticism. Um, and so this idea is partially based on that. But then St. Gregory, Pope Gregory, divided that into kind of inward and outward um, expressions of that kind of voluntary martyrdom. So the three types of martyrdom that the Irish talked about were, first of all, the martyrdom everybody knows about, the red martyrdom, where you uh, die for your faith. You are uh, a witness. You have you, That's your testimony. To be a witness in that sense was, was to be martyred. Uh, isn't that what martyr means, to be a witness? Anyway, um, so the second kind of martyrdom that most of us know about is the green martyrdom or blue martyrdom, which is uh, the denial of desires or asceticism. I talked about how, you know, it was more common for the Irish to, uh, for some of the saints to, to perform these feats of self-denial and asceticism. There's stories of not necessarily Irish saints, but other ones who would wear hair shirts. Speaking of, I, I talked about um, St. Crazy Jim. Crazy Jim, Saint 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 Jacoba, something uh, who is also known as Crazy Jim, who wrote uh, the at the cross, her station keeping Stabat Mater, I believe. Uh, but he, his wife, he was living a, a a life of pleasures, and then there was this accident, and he found out that his wife had been wearing a hair shirt under her fine clothes as a form of penitence and asceticism for him, she took on his burden. That's a relationship. That's love, according to the sermon. Anyway, so uh, there's the uh, the green... Oh, <laughs> one of the ways... It, I discovered this like tonight. One of the ways that they would uh, perform this asceticism when they would fast would be to coerce... Like they would take on, um, if there was somebody who was being treated unjustly, they would sit outside the house of the person that was doing the injustice, that was doing the oppression and not eat until either that person changed or they died, thus piling shame onto that person's house, their life, uh, uh, by bringing attention to that and by they would be willing to let you die before they were willing to change, to, to change their ways. Uh, there was serious shame in that. Um, and apparently they not only did it to unjust uh, rulers and judges and things, they also would do it to God. They would fast in order to try to change God's mind to, you know, help somebody whose burden they had taken on. Um, the third kind is the white, third kind of martyrdom is the white martyrdom. This is um, separation from everything that you love, perpet potentially perpetual pilgrimage. Um, so that is something also that was, I don't want to say it was uniquely Irish, but I would say that the stories uh, of Irish, of Celtic Christians seeking out pilgrimage, perpetual pilgrimage to leave your home, uh, as a form of, of intentional martyrdom, as a gift to God, uh, it seems I saw more evidence of that in, in Celtic Christianity than I did in any other uh, expression of Christianity around the world. 
Um, so to bring it back to, to Josh, I was actually thinking that um, militarily, um, now he's, it's, Josh is an interesting case. Father Josh is an interesting case because he's a soldier and he's doing this for his country. But he's also um, a chaplain in the military and he's doing this like his his job in the military is very much tied up with God. Um, and he sees this as a, as a vocation, as a calling from God. And so in a, in a very real sense, he has embraced all of these martyrdoms. There, there is a very real sense of asceticism and in, in the military. Um, now Josh gets care packages and whatnot. And, and apparently is not, losing as much weight as he had hoped, but, but you give up a lot of the comforts of home to go out and serve in the military. Um, he's, uh, facing less so where he is now than where he was earlier, uh, in his earlier deployment in Afghanistan. But anytime that you're in the military, you face the potential for red martyrdom. And while on the one side, he would be dying for his country. On the other hand, uh, there's, you know, when you're a chaplain, you don't take a gun and you are potentially facing death without any sort of defense for yourself. Um, so he's at least expressing the willingness for the red martyrdom. And then most devastating to Josh and his family right now is, 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 I shouldn't say devastating, but difficult is the white martyrdom of, of the pilgrimage, of the separation from those who you love. He wants to be home. Uh, his family wants him to be home. And the fact that they are all willing to lay down uh, what they want out of duty for their country, but, but more importantly, out of submission to God, and a willingness to sacrifice in order to tying back to that, to the beginning of the Cambrai homily to take on the burdens of those people who, who need them to sacrifice in order to do that. Uh, so there is a, a unity of the, of the red, white, and green martyrdoms in in his in his deployment right now and then you ready for this okay not a patriotic person by the way but i did say that that the word green in um in irish can also be translated as blue and so father josh in the military uh is facing is living through the red, white, and blue martyrdoms. What? Oh my God. It's kind of like I'm joking, but I'm really not. <sighs> this is a good homily. I... There's a lot there, but at the core of it is this. In as much as we are not willing to suffer, in as much as we are not willing to sacrifice, both for God and for our neighbor, we are not children of God. We do not have compassion and we do not carry his cross in our hearts. So, last week I was telling you to be like Peter Claver. And this week, I am saying, be like Father Josh. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, my soul, and my strength. Make me a good man. Mm -hmm.